This is Harriet Thorpe. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Harriet Thorpe, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. It's a massive delight to have you here. You're a, a legend of stage and screen. Thank you so much. Very welcome. <laughs> now, your your mum is in her own right a, a, an amazing author and screenwriter and... Was it uh, the Leather Boys that she wrote? Right, the Leather Boys, right. yeah. And so it started off as a book, and then your mum translated that into a screenplay as well for film, and then you moved over to Hollywood. That's correct. My mother was already a successful novelist, and it was um, her novel, and um, that was then immediately made into a movie, yeah. which was wonderful. And that started her movie career. And when I was about eight, and my sister was about five, we went to live in Beverly Hills. It's very exciting. How long were you there for? We went to school there for two consecutive years, and then we went there for the following 20 years. She was writing movies all that time and novels, and um, ballets for Kenneth McMillan she did um, Myling and Isadora did the synopsis for both of those and yeah for TV and everything she was extraordinary prolific writer so it's incredible so from a very early age you were surrounded by by showbiz and Hollywood and is that where you sort of had the spark of inspiration to get into it yourself or not no I don't think as a child you just grow up in the world that you're in you yeah. and I think that um, my first memory or early one of my earliest memories was trying to make my younger sister Matilda who's also an actress trying to make her laugh and when she did laugh it gave me the most wonderful feeling and I think it's that instinct to perform it's not like you have a choice it's not like you're suddenly it's incumbent upon you it's something you just instinctively know and feel Absolutely. to communicate and actually that's what it is and throughout history people have needed to communicate it's a very good way of doing it well yeah I mean it, it, you share I mean, I only ever play psychotic, crazy ladies, but, you know, you share emotions, you have to understand emotions, you have to understand frailty, love, hysterics, you know, comedy, laughs, you know, it covers everything, and human nature has always needed that from the beginning, whether it's Greek tragedies or Shakespeare, or we need it in every day, and now we have, you know, the glories of our own shows we can put online ourselves. It's very true. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd just make my own one, you know. Well, why not? It's yeah. cheaper, faster, funnier. Oh, yeah. yeah, standard. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> now, in 1985, you started, I believe, Princess Jill in the show Pravda. Pravda. I was lucky enough to be in the Richard Air David Hare Company at the National Theatre. And we did Government Inspector Pravda, um, were our two first shows uh, with Rick Mail and Anthony Hopkins. And it was a company that ran for two years doing new works all the time. And um, it was the most thrilling and exciting company to be a part of. Yeah, because uh, I, I looked at the cast, it's in there, there's Bill Nighy and uh, Tim McKinney. It had an amazing cast with yeah. Bill Nye and um, all sorts of amazing people as well. You studied drama at the, the London Central School of Speech and Drama. When I was 16, I went to the Royal Ballet School till my tits got too big, because yeah. you can't put them into a tutu, um, and still can't. And then I stopped dancing, and I went on to drama school at Central School of Speech and Drama, which was just amazing. And um, I made some amazing friends, and we're still friends now, 40 plus years later. Uh, possible. We're both in our early 20s. Well, uh, yes, I was going to say I'm barely 30, yeah, but yeah. anyway, it's extraordinary. But my son is 30, and I'm, I will admit to 35, but that's another miracle. <laughs> um, so, um, and then I went to Central, and then, of course, started working straight away in repertory theatre. And then, um, and of course, um, I met Dawn and Jen, we were at Central at the same time, so I was privileged and lucky enough to work with them in French and Saunders. and following that with Jen and Ab Fab and Mirabel and all sorts of other little bits and pieces here and there and it's been a, you know a long term wonderful friendship um, and uh, yeah central working and then things evolved from that and then I did the British Empire and then of course Ab Fab hit the screens after that we did British for seven years Ab Fab on and off has been going running for about 25 I think um, and then the move and then the movie. So, um, you know, it just I'm terribly lucky and I've just finished Mame, the musical. I'm lucky enough to also do musicals 
there's Madame Thenardier, another crazy lady, yeah. um, <laughs> Tanya in Mamma Mia, um, Vera in Maine, which I've just done with the iconic Tracy Bennett, um, which has been absolutely glorious. Um, very good things about it. Oh, it's had the most wonderful reviews and um, yeah, absolutely amazing. And we're doing it again in the new year in Northampton and Salisbury. So that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'll have to go and check it out. You certainly will. Now, I first saw you on screen, unbeknownst to me, in about 1985. It was Girls on Top. You're in two episodes. Girls on Top. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Amazing. And of course, you popped up, as you mentioned, in French and Saunders. You're also in the first ever episode of Bottom. What were Rick Mallon and Adrian Edmondson like to work with? You were in the scene, you were, you were in a pub and they were trying to chat you up. They'd sprayed themselves with a pheromone. It was going very, very badly. I think you husband was there was chaos it was hysterical and Rick and Aid of course I knew also because um, Jen was married to Aid and Rick yeah. I'd worked with at the National Theatre and um, so yeah it was it was wonderful and brilliant and such a laugh to, to do now you're you're very famously known of course for, for being Carol in the British Empire I revisited the the first episode recently and the rest of it so I just kept watching it and <laughs> The, the character of Carol was so well formed in that very first episode. Like you could you could watch you for five seconds and know exactly you know, it was amazing. Carol was the most wonderful character and I remember when I was auditioning I it said she cries all the time and I thought that's really fascinating. But crying all the time is not an interesting thing. Trying not to cry, which is what we do when we cry most right. of the time, is much more interesting. So that developed her speech pattern. Yeah. I also lo remember I mean, she adored Britus and, of course, secretly had Britus's twins. I don't know if yes. you've got that far. No, no, I've seen the whole thing several times. It's season a series two, I think. Probably, I can't yeah. remember. Um, and and um, she adored Mr. Britus. And I also remember that thing in, in school when you adore the teacher. You can't say their name fast say yeah. You can't say their name fast enough, so it's ps, 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 like that. <laughs> so, you know, I, it was a joy to play. Um, again, we had a wonderful reunion about 18 months ago yes, and uh, when they rebuilt the centre. And we're all there and we're all still alive, touch wood, somewhere, yeah. In, um, was it Ringwood and sort of near the New Forest? Ringwood is where we used to film yeah, it, yeah. that's right. And uh, yeah, it was glorious. Absolutely. Now, at the end of series five, at the time it was thought to be the last series, and Mr. Britches was crushed to death, and then he wasn't um, in the next series. Was there a while we definitively thought that was over? No, not at all, because we blew up the centre three times. Uh, people <laughs> died all the time, and, and uh, there was never a sense that it was finishing, and it should come back. It should come back, actually. As you say, there's been a revival. It's been over 20 years now, I think. Is it possible? How can we make it happen? Who do we need to write to? Well, everyone, obviously. Um, there is uh, on Twitter, Bring Back Britus, um, which is a united group of people yeah. who are trying to bring it back. And, um, and I think it's just... Certainly, um, I see Russell a lot, and we've done a few little excerpts yeah. which are online um, about trying to bring Mr. Bridges back because we really need him right now in this country because he could probably run it best, gotta say. Um, but anyway, there we go. Um, so it couldn't be worse, could it? No, it could only be better with Bridges. Yeah. Exactly. Strap line, better with Bridges. <laughs> Do you, do you ever think what Carol would be doing these days? Do you think she'd still be a receptionist but with her, her grandchildren in a drawer? As we've said in the in the little things we've done already, yes, Carol, yeah. of course she's still there. We're all still there. Um, Linda's making um, vegan food, and vegetarian food in a bar. I think Colin is probably in a van in the... In the um, in the car park itself is not allowed into the centre because we did a, made a, a wonderful name, which was a... Um, derived from the letters of Mr. Britters, yeah. uh, the new lady, the new manager, who we all loathed. And um, yeah, everyone's moved on. The boys are married with children. Um, I think um, Gavin is now um, a, a counsellor. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, we do things all the time. Um, and Laura, of course, is, a, is a living abroad now as a counsellor, um, a different kind of counsellor. She's now a personal therapist. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we've all got futures. I mean, it's just whether people will grab it and move on with it, because they should. Sure they will. I mean, there's been uh, loads of classic comedies that have been revived in recent years. Even the class without the original cast. And we're still the original cast, which is so lovely. And um, I think that, um, yeah, I think they're all still there. Carol would be there, but she's got her grandchildren in the draw. I think um, occasionally uh, her son... 
Ben comes back and tries to get into the cupboard, but she's not happy about that. Um, just for a quick nap. And, um, yeah. It's amazing. Well, I sincerely hope there is more of it. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'm just going to write to everybody and just tell everybody just in case they can make it. Please do. Or we can just make it. I've got a camera. There we go. We're off. Uh, we'll just make our own one. Yeah. Now, you're also, of course, famously Fleur and absolutely fabulous uh, Patsy's eccentric colleague. Which of those two characters would you say was closer to you or would you say they're both miles apart? I think in all characters there is an essence of things that you identify with and you relate to, yeah. but they're never you, they're just parts of you. Absolutely. Yeah, the cast of that obviously returned in 2016 for the, the movie. Do you think there might be more of that? Do you think that was the final hurrah for those characters? Never say never, but I think... Jen's moving on to so many other amazing things and she's doing plays and musicals yeah. and, you know, films and things. So, I mean, who knows? Never say never, but we've had a wonderful time and we're always ready to jump back in. Fantastic. And I'm always ready to watch it. I just keep checking the plan, you know. No, dear. Not yet. <laughs> I'm optimistic, though. I'm happy, I'm happy about that. That's yeah. good, yeah. Now, I must talk to you. My favourite show of all time apart from this one obviously is Wicked and you played uh, Madame Morrible in it and you were in it for two years to start with I believe and then you returned a few years later and you even did it on The Weakest Link that's right I did yeah it was yeah. it was the most glorious part to play the show is so extraordinary and amazing and yeah. Morrible is the only one who's truly wicked and yes. everyone else is trying to fit in be good and and cope where the, you know, the wonderful thing about it is whether you're 9 or 90, you identify with the feeling of being green because we never fit in, we're never good enough and we're always trying to be better. And um, I think that's why it has spoken to so many people for so long. I think it's such a, a beautiful twist on The Wizard of Oz as well because uh, I loved that, that film growing up but Wicked just gives you a much deeper appreciation of it. I think also it has a tongue-in-cheek sense so it also has a bigger message and um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Now you've also played iconic characters in uh, Sweeney, Todd and Mamma Mia, Ruthless. Is there, is there a role that you'd love to play on stage? Is there one that you've... I just at the moment adore playing Vera yeah. I love playing that character so much and I I think it's important to just be happy with where you, where you are yeah. and that's enough I don't I just love every job I do and I enjoy every character I play I think if one's endlessly searching for something then there's an endless quest rather than being present and enjoying the d thing that you're doing absolutely have you got any props or keepsakes or mementos from any of the, the TV shows or shows that you've done? Um, not from TV shows really, no, not really. Um, I think mostly those little tiny little things come from from stage shows. Yeah. But yeah, but the, not, nothing important or no, not really. Because it's your memories and yeah. That's the nice thing is that all these things exist so you can actually go back and rewatch them and of course people keep talking to you about them forever so like you oh, yeah. yeah can't get rid of her no this interview's going to go on for nine years yeah apparently yeah, yeah. the battery will only go on for an hour but we'll just keep chatting keep chatting do you yeah oh, yeah now so this is a very important question i love this in the in the tv show doctors you've played four separate characters i believe it's four so i can list them i can't pronounce this one but Cloda Merrilies, Miranda Hill, Dr. Chris Basie and Sandy Wares. I thought it was about three, I didn't realise it was four, but it's been, yes, I adore doing Doctors, it's such fun. And again, playing all these different lovely women. When you're doing them, do you, because they all exist in the same universe, do you sort of imagine they could all be distantly related? <laughs> well, not really, because they're all so diverse and different yes. and completely different people and it's over a passage of many years so that it's not like they can bump into each other at a cafe although actually that might be quite a good spin-off yeah i'd watch that yeah, there you go see i was recently re-watching classic episodes of prison of self Cage, and uh someone that i knew as a prisoner had turned up as two different wardens before becoming a prisoner i just i really enjoy that it's great when you watch things back. little yeah idiosyncratic things that you only notice it's just yeah. fab you're also famously an LGBT ally and you've supported loads of events and stuff like that. In March is Trans Day of Visibility. Have you got any messages to the trans community and people that might be having a tough time at the moment as an ally? I think it's just so important to honour who you are and we are all enough and there is no perfect and there is no one way 
and you were enough. Very well said. Thank you. That's what I think. <laughs> As do I. Tell us a fun fact about you, something we may not know, a hobby, a party trick. I'm not going to do it now, but I can still do the splits. Whereas I've been doing it the entire interview. Apparently, yes. You can't tell, but it's very no. impressive. It's just my clothes. I can't do it with my body, but yeah. In your head. Yeah. I can do it actually physically, but I'm not going to. Tell me what you're working on next. What can we see you in? I am in a new sitcom for the BBC called Mr. Winner, where I play the mother of a 41-year-old gentleman. No, no, how, how, but you're supposed to say, how could you be a mother of a 41-year-old? It's impossible. Thank you, too late. Right, it's not, I'm just trying to digest that information. Is it an animated character? No, too late, missed it, yeah. Have you ever heard the most shocking news ever? I mean, I, you can't yeah, just... No, you're right, it is, it is profoundly shocking. I almost wanted to stand up so I could sit back down, you know. I, I, I get that, yeah. When do you start your stand-up? Um, it's a very good question, so I'm writing it as we speak. Thank you very much. As we speak now. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always writing, always working. There you go. Exactly. Hashtag showbiz. <laughs> Finally, have you got any messages for people watching the Sarah O'Connor Show and your fans around the world? Um, the Sarah O'Connor Show is a sensation of... Thank you. Ah, it's a pleasure, dear. So are you. Thank you. We'll <laughs> invoice each other later. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, just watch the show because it's fucking brilliant. Thank you so much. Well, Harriet Thorpe, it's been an absolute thrill to have you on my show today. Thank you so much for your time. Such a pleasure and a thrill to be here. And uh, thank you for everybody watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a big thumbs up, lots of lovely comments. And I'll see you all again soon for another episode of The Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye.